I'm uh, Guillaume Andinou. I've studied in uh, the Ecole Polytechnique in France, and I'm now in uh, EPFL in Switzerland. And uh, this is a joint work with uh, Olivier Levillain, who was here two years ago at Langsec, and uh, Jean-Yves Mijon from uh, ANSI. So we worked on uh, PDF parsing and validation. So what is PDF? It stands for Portable Document Format. And uh, so it's a commonly used format by, by a lot of people, but it's also a format that has many security issues, which is why we, in, we are interested in uh, this format. So there have been uh, more than 500 uh, vulnerabilities in uh, Adobe Reader since the last uh, 17 years. Uh, so another point is that there are other implementation than uh, Adobe Reader, but uh, there, are, there are a lot of discrepancies between these different parsers, uh, which can be a problem uh, first, like PDF can be used for contracts or uh, tax forms, so we want to, be, to make sure that uh, the file is read in the same way by everyone. And uh, also, if we write a malware detector that will uh, analyze the, the semantic content of the file, we want that this parser behaves the same way as the PDF reader. And uh, last, uh, the syntax of PDF facilitates polymorphism. So in previous work, uh, there has been uh, examples of files that can be opened at the same time by a PDF reader and uh, by a zip software or JPEG software. There are a lot of this kind of examples. So again, uh, for example, a malware detector has to consider uh, both types of the file. And uh, the keynote mentioned a, a bit of this. Uh, you could uh, open a PDF as a text file. You, could, you would get something else. So, so in our work, we aimed at verifying the PDF from the syntactic level, so from the very lower layer of uh, the format, whereas previous work had more analyzed uh, semantic content such as the JavaScript interpreter and stuff like that. So there are basically two approaches to validate file. The first one is the blacklist approach, which most malware detector uh, implement. So they just collect a bunch of existing malware and try to uh, blacklist them, but it will not detect new forms of malware. And uh, another one is the whitelist approach that we advocate here. Uh, so at the expense maybe of a higher rejection rate, we accept only files that are clean. So in this talk, I will um, first introduce uh, the syntax and the structure of the PDF format. Then we will uh, try to, um, to see what uh, can be a pragmatic solution to the problem of validation of PDF files to our tool Caradoc. And then we will... Uh, see uh, how this applies to a real world file and which conclusion we can uh, 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 draw from it. So first, uh, a PDF file basically is uh, written as a text-like format. So it's made of uh, objects that will de describe the document. So there's the null object, booleans, numbers, strings, which are in parentheses here, uh, names, then we can uh, build more complex objects, such as arrays that can contain arbitrary objects, and dictionaries that map keys to values. Then we can uh, build more complex uh, structures, and uh, we, have, uh, we can introduce reference. So uh, we can uh, uh, give a name to an object. So here it's a pair of two numbers, one, zero, for example. And then we can reference this object later. So it's useful, for example, if you have a font that is shared between several pages, you don't want to copy the same um, object several times. And uh, you also have streams, which uh, allow to compress content. So for example, if we want to include images inside the document, uh, they will be included in a stream. And uh, the stream also has metadata, which is uh, in the form of a dictionary. So for example, the dimensions of the image. Uh, then at the file level, uh, the basic structure is as follows. So we have a header that identifies 
the PDF uh, type and the, the, the version. Then we have uh, all the objects uh, that represent the documents. Uh, and then a reference table that indicates the location of these objects so that we can retrieve them. Last, we have a trailer, which uh, is the logical root of the document, and uh, the end of file that indicates the position of the reference table. So basically, the format was meant to be passed uh, from the end. So we start at the end of file, retrieve the reference table, and then can find the objects. Uh, this was the very basic format, but actually, with the following versions of the format, there are uh, more complex structures were introduced. So for example, we can uh, have an incremental update. So if we want to uh, update a file, we can just append new objects that will describe uh, the modification, and uh, then a new table and a new under file that will uh, reference them. We can also delete previous objects, and uh, it will reference the previous table. Uh, there is also object stream, which is a means to uh, uh, encapsulate objects inside a, a stream, which is a compressed object, so, so that the file is of a smaller size. And there is a linearization, which is used for um, if you want to deliver a PDF file over a network. Uh, as we saw, the table is at the end, which is problematic. So it's kind of a hybrid structure with the first object acting as a table to, uh, to be able to display the contents uh, during downloading. Then, at the logical level, a PDF file, so um, as, a, as I mentioned, uh, there, has, there are references between objects. And uh, here is an example of a 17-page document, like a presentation like this. So there are about 1,000 objects, and uh, we can see that some uh, of these objects are in a um, structured way, so we will try to investigate that. Uh, so first, um, we can note that most of his uh, structure in the graph are trees. So for example, the pages are organized as a tree, and uh, the leaves uh, of these trees are the pages. So the leftmost leaf is the first page, then we can go on to find all the pages. This can be useful if some pages share the same properties, such as like the dimensions. Uh, also, there is the table of contents. So in this example, on the left-hand side, you can see a, a list of items. So for example, chapters and sections. And uh, it's also organized as, the, as a tree, but the, the thing is that the, the kids are, uh, of, of each node are organized as a, as a linked list, which is a problem for passing because, for example, an attacker can write an invalid structure with loops inside the, the, the linked list structure. And uh, actual parsers uh, often don't check that. So I have a demonstration uh, with two examples of PDF file that may be problematic. So the first one is uh, one with a loop in the outline structure, such as uh, the, the one I presented before. And the second one is a polymorphic file, so we will open it with uh, several PDF readers and uh, get different content. So of course, these files were already reported to software editors, so the demo is with previous version of this software. So, so I will start with the cycle in the outline. I open it with the Adobe Reader. All right, so I can see page one, page two, page one again, if I open it. It starts like this, <laughs> and uh, it's never ending, okay, cool. Uh, if I open the same file with Foxit Reader, what do I get? So again, page one, page two. If I try to open it, oh, the program has crashed. I will not send the, the crash report because it will not work. And then if I open it with, let's say, Sumatra PDF, okay, here, the software detected the loop and stopped the thing. I can uh, open it with uh, Linux. And here, uh, we don't see it properly, but it's loading uh, forever, so we cannot see any content. Then, the polymorphic uh, example, I open it 
with Adobe Reader, so we can see that it detected Adobe Reader. I open it with Foxit Reader. So this is the content for Foxit Reader or Chrome or Sumatra PDF. I uh, open it with Sumatra PDF, again, the same uh, content. And the one with Linux. So this is popular, the library used for it. This is the same file. You can find it on our GitHub. So this, uh, these two examples show that a problem in parser can lead to several attacks. So the first one would be a direct attack on the structure, for example, a denial of service. As I showed, the, the parser is looping forever. So you can imagine whatever you want. And then uh, you can have evasion techniques. So we, we take advantage of implementation discrepancies to uh, evade a malware detector uh, and uh, target only the, the for example, uh, Adobe Reader that we want to attack. So what are the, sol the possible solutions? So in Caradoc, we implemented the verification of the document at three levels. So first, uh, at the first layer, we check the file syntax. Then we check the semantic of the objects, which uh, consists of a type checking. And then we can perform higher level verification, such as verifying that the graph has no loops or uh, that the images are correct. So at syntax level, we want to guarantee the extraction of objects without any ambiguity. So for that, we uh, formalize the grammar for PDF in BNF format because the, the specification is actually written in natural language and doesn't provide any of this grammar. And also the, the parser that we studied were mostly shotgun parsers, so without any formalization of the grammar. Uh, for this, we also implemented structure ret restrictions, so we don't want to allow updates, linearization, or this kind of complex structure, which uh, are not strictly necessary to, uh, to display a file, but which uh, uh, add a layer of complexity to the parser. And uh, last, uh, we systematically reject corrupted files, uh, whereas the specification, the, so the ISO specification says, when a conforming reader reads a PDF file with a damaged or missing cross-reference table, it may attempt to rebuild the table by scanning all the objects in the file. So it doesn't say in, uh, to which extent, in uh, which way, and actually uh, each, parcel, each uh, PDF reader does is what, uh, whatever he wants, which is what we don't want. Then at uh, the object level, we want to guarantee a semantic consistency. So if a page uh, references uh, an image, we want to check to be sure that this object uh, is actually an image and not something else. Uh, so for this purpose, we implemented a type checking algorithm, which works by a type inference. So here is an example of a complete Hello World file. Uh, you don't have to understand the details. But uh, we start the type checking with a trailer, which is the logical root of the document. So we know that this object should have the type trailer. Here in yellow, we have inferred this type. Then in blue, we will uh, actually check the type. So we check that each field is, uh, is uh, correct, uh, uh, conforms to, uh, to the type specification. And here, for example, we can infer by uh, the root field that uh, the object number one is of type catalog and uh, that the object number six is the, of type info. Then we go on with the catalog. We see that object number two should have type pages. So that's all right. Object number one is checked. Uh, we go on. We see that uh, we have an array of kids, which are the uh, pages. So we infer that uh, object number three is a node in the page tree. And then last, uh, when we arrive to the page, so we check also the fields, and uh, we go back again to object number two, so we, we will not this time infer this type because we already checked it, but we will uh, confirm that object number two is of the type page root, which is great. So 
going back again to the previous 17 page documents, uh, what did we find with the type checking? So here we can see 17 blocks, uh, which are like, which, which have a page at the center in red and a lot of uh, yellow uh, objects around it. Actually, these objects represent like arrows that can uh, allow to navigate uh, in the document. I show it here on the right uh, bottom corner. Then uh, all the blue packets represent each uh, font in the document, and each object will represent one glyph in the, in the document, so one letter. Uh, and uh, on the right hand side, we can see the outline of the document, so the table of contents, and we can see this uh, uh, tree structure. So then, once we have uh, type inferred and type checked the document, we can uh, perform verification at a higher level. So we can verify that the tree structure are correct. So the page tree is a tree, the outline is also correct. And then we can easily integrate uh, other verification in the future. So we can extract all font objects and then check that they are conformed to their spe specification or images or include existing analysis on uh, JavaScript. Because um, contrary to pre previous work, we are really sure of uh, all the objects uh, in the document. We don't just check this particular uh, pass and maybe miss some, uh, some places where JavaScript could be present. So how does it apply to real world files? So we did uh, our implementation in uh, OCaml with the PDF specification because, as I said, uh, in previous parsers, there, was, there wasn't any grammar formalization, so we started from scratch. And uh, so what did, the, what did we implement? So from the PDF file, we implemented a strict parser that uh, is the translation of our grammar, but also a relaxed parser, and I will come again to it, in order to normalize uh, existing files so that they can be uh, accepted by the, by the strict parser. Then this parser gives us the list of objects. So we can output the graph of reference or extract specific object. The user can, can have access to it. And uh, then we go on to the type checking. So again, we can uh, extract the list of inferred types for further analysis. Uh, then the graph checking, and uh, ultimately, uh, we check that the file is correct. So how did we test it? We collected 10,000 files from uh, random queries on a web search engine, and, uh, and uh, we tried our uh, verification tool chain on them. So we can see that already some files are directly accepted, so 14% uh, were correctly passed with the strict parser, and 5% uh, had no error uh, on the, the, the thing that we checked. But we can see that the bottleneck is that was at the first stage because many files did not pass the strict parser. So we uh, put about normalizing them, and uh, that's why we implemented the relaxed parser that supports the common structures found in the wild. So incremental updates, object stream, all of these are really present in the wild. So we needed to normalize it. So here uh, we have the relaxed parser that extracts all the objects. And then we have also a further cleaning uh, step where we remove all the unused objects, the objects that are not referenced. So in the case of incremental updates, uh, we could uh, have deleted some of them, so we just remove them so that the file is cleaner, and then uh, we can uh, uh, write the normalized file. So some files were not normalized because some of them were encrypted, and uh, some of them also had uh, or other syntax errors that were not really present in the spec, so we, did, we chose not to normalize everything at all costs. So after this normalization step, uh, we also run uh, our uh, toolchain. 
So here the strict parser accepted all the normalized files, which is good. And then after type checking, uh, we saw that 14% of the, of the documents were fully type checked. So we increased it by threefold uh, compared to the direct verification. And uh, about 14% also had uh, type errors. And uh, what is in the middle? Well, we didn't implement all of the types that could be present in PDF file because the specification is like 500 pages document. So we, we try to, to start with the most common types and uh, then we can, uh, in the future, uh, add new types. Uh, what is interesting is that our type checker uh, detected uh, typos that are present in real world and that were undetected before. So, for example, uh, normally there is this one field that is supposed to be black is one with an uppercase i, and uh, some PDF producer just saw a lowercase l and wrote black ls one, and uh, no one noticed that because uh, you know parsers are allowed to uh, to uh, to correct files silently. Uh, also, some uh, uh, there was the typo instead of x object. There was X subject, so with a C instead of. Um, so that's, that is good uh, to detect that. And uh, then at the graph level, we also uh, identified incorrect tree structures, so that had loops or something like that. So what remains to be done in the future? So the first thing to do is to complete the set of types so that we can uh, accept more and more files and uh, be realistic. Uh, for deployments. Uh, there's also the, I didn't mention uh, the compression filters, but uh, there are a lot of algorithms possible to compress content. And uh, we can, uh, we have to check that uh, these compression filters are uh, correctly uh, implemented. Uh, then the graphical content. So I didn't mention that, but uh, the graphical content is basically uh, vector graphic content, so you have a bunch of comments that say, okay, uh, goes to this position, write text, etc. So it's also uh, another grammar, and uh, uh, we could, uh, we could uh, check that in the future. And then we could check the images, fonts, parts that are kind of external to the PDF format, but which are included in it. So to summarize our comp contribution, first we identify novel issues in PDF parsers, and uh, there is more in uh, our paper. Second, we propose and formalize the simplified syntax for PDF. And uh, last, we implemented Caradoc to pass and validate PDF files. So we have a GitHub page, and we are happy to take pull requests and uh, issues and contributions. So that's all I have. I'm happy to take questions. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So uh, I looked at that. Actually, they just uh, implemented a very basic uh, uh, implementation of uh, of uh, this parser, and uh, their point was uh, with the incremental updates, you can uh, have a loop. Actually, so the the each, re each uh, reference table which refer will uh, reference the, the other one as the previous one, and then the unless loop uh, will, uh, will make uh, the, the parser crash. Uh, so in our uh, case, uh, we try to, to go a bit, a, deep, a bit further than uh, their work, which was very basic uh, on that. And uh, we also decided to discard incremental updates at all because it, we thought that it was a bit too complex to parse, and uh, actually their cog parser was quite long, as they said in the paper. That would be the paper in the first idea uh, of the workshop, oh, really? which I think was quite interesting in that uh, they started to prove termination, uh, encountered that they could not, and then, of course, discovered the uh, looping tricks, and several looping tricks, that allowed 
allows them to trash every parser at that time when it was. But no. we'll not do this. No, because it was a bit uh, uh, further at a higher level of the parsing yeah. stage. Yeah, that was the question. Yeah. Yeah, so actually we didn't uh, really analyze that uh, further, but uh, most PDF producer include in the metadata uh, which version of the software it is. And uh, if I go back to this kind of typos, we can actually identify that uh, this came from the same producer. So yeah, it, will be, uh, it would be an interesting future work to analyze which, browser, which uh, producer behaves in which way. Yeah. 